Hello everyone, welcome to the Backyard Foundry. Today I'll be showing you how to make a brand new bucket foundry. Here we can see the Mark 1 foundry. It's a bit smaller than the one I want to make right now. It worked until the crucible failed. It got so hot, about, about 3,000 degrees, that melted the steel crucible in here. So you can see that the uh, plaster in here has broken down a bit. This is the bucket we're going to be using for the new foundry. It's uh, about half as big, like uh, adding half of it is big. So there, this is where we mix our materials, and our materials are here. So we're going to start off by dumping three quarters of a bucket of plaster pyrus into the mixing bucket. Now this bucket is our sizing bucket, but I noticed that these are the same size as this. So I'll just dump one in and then three quarters of this one in. There's one, you have to be careful, it's quite dusty, so you don't want to lose as much as possible. So we're supposed to put one three quarter buckets in, but I'm going to put two because I want to make a lid for the foundry. Okay, now that plastic Paris is in, I'm going to use this uh, plastic Paris bucket to make to make the sand. So now we're taking two buckets each. One bucket of sand. And here is the second bucket of sand. Now the reason it's plastic Paris is sand is that it's very insulated. So when it insulates, the heat stays in, and even in the Mark 1 here, when I would touch the side in the bucket, and it's at 3,000 degrees, you can touch the side of the bucket without it being hot. So if you're going to be on the side of the bucket, it's safe. So now I'm going to go get water to mix the mixture. Okay, I'm back with the water, and we'll be ready to mix this up. So, leave that out. Let's pour the first bucket in. You can see the bucket's a bit too small for this, but we'll be all right. We'll let the water go down into the rest of the mixture. Alright, so as that bubbles, put a second, this is the half, so it's one and a half plaster Paris buckets of water. And that just doesn't overflow, so we're good. Now, we'll wait for it to settle, and we will mix. Put this back a bit. We're ready to mix. We're going to use our hand, mix it, put it down, put your hand right in there. Let's easily stir it. Making sure it doesn't slosh out. You want the mixture to be right. Now you have to do this relatively fast because the plaster Paris will start to set up as it gets wet. So we're going to make sure that we do this in a good amount of time. 
and making sure we get all the lumps out. All right, this is getting pretty thick and lumpy. We've got most of it mixed together. So I'm gonna get this wire whip here. I'm gonna really try to bust up the clumps. This does make quite a mess on your hands, so just be ready to wash up and wash your tools because it will stick after it sets up. But it should wash off quite easily within the hour. Make sure we get down to the corners and along the sides. And get as much out as possible. All right, this is all mixed up. I just wanted to wash up and see it washes right off. So I have the fingernails. Get that later. But we're ready to pour into what will be the foundry. It's quite heavy. This is an old, just a six gallon garbage pail. It was a bird seed bucket, so there's a little seeds in there still. That's okay. This is a good size. So we're ready to pour now. is quite a bit. So let's just take the get our green bucket sizer and push it in and cut off the string. And this will mold the area where the coals will be and the crucible. Just see if this is enough. Yeah, I'm gonna put a little bit more in just to the side. I want it to be about an inch or an inch and a half from the top. Here, so like about right here I want it to be. Push back in. Yeah, it looks all right. Put a little bit more in, I think we'll be all right then. Yep. All right. Now I'm going to save the rest of this to make a lid. But now we're going to put this in right there. And I'm going to show you how to make the lid quick. Take the rest in there. Two U-bolts. Set them in like this and get something, or let's lean them against the edge. And that'll make a good handle for you. Just drop it in. So you put it right in the edge there, and that will make a nice handle to set over that. I'm also going to put something in the middle to make a hole to see the fire come up through. Yep, so I'm going to stick this can in the middle. Set a little weight on top, put the soccer ball on it, and that will make our lid. So this aside, back to the foundry itself. So I'm gonna to want to push this down to like that. And what you want to do? We're gonna hold this here for a good amount of time until it sticks. You'll feel the um, plaster Paris sand mixture start to set. And that'll feel like it's getting warm. So if you feel the side of your bucket, you probably can't do it unless you're holding, unless you're not holding this. Feel it's getting warm because that's the chemical reaction that does uh, harden the plastic Paris. Okay, everyone. This is about set. I've set the Mark 1 foundry on top of this. It's pretty heavy, so it'll hold it down nice. It's almost ready to pull out, and then we'll be able to pull the bucket out in about a couple hours. Okay, everyone, it's been about an hour since I left the uh, bucket to, to cure. So I'm gonna pour, pull out the green bucket. Now this will ruin the bucket, the green bucket, but you can just get in any other beach bucket or whatever bucket you have. So, I'm going to rip it out, make sure we care careful around the edges so we don't chip it.
part of them, we just pull out the bucket. That took a bit of effort. I'd recommend using the plastic Harris buckets because that took a good deal. So I really ripped this thing up. Definitely unusable again. So this is done. So now we just have all this scrappy stuff. Actually, when I put my hand in here, it's a good amount of degrees warmer. You really feel the chemical reaction in there. So right now we're just gonna try to clean all this up. We'll just, we're just gonna dump this out. Be careful not to crack the inside because it is not cured yet. And if you worked with plastic tires before, you'll know that it does get not as hard as a rock. All right, let's clean it out. You can see that it does have a good shape to it. See the lines are there from the bucket. Nice and clean. I think I'll sand down the top of it maybe. Wipe it up with a nice towel. But now we're going to drill the hole in the side for the air. An air tube goes in to blast air into the furnace. And that gives it just the extra heat that it will need. As more oxygen is pumped into the fire, the hotter it will get. Okay, so we have a one and a half inch hole saw, hole bit right there. This is going to go into the side of the drum at about a 45 degree angle. It should end up right at the base. So the hole should end right at the base at an angle. So if your crucible does fail, all the metal will not dump onto the ground. It will just sit in the bottom so you can get it later. So I'm going to start drilling this now. Okay, everyone, uh, something a little funny happened with the camera. I'm still in the same spot, drilling, drilling the hole for the air vent. Well, we're through, and a bit fell off, but we are through the hole. I'll show you. So there's the exit, that's where the air is going to come in. There's the entrance. The pipe's going to go in. I'll show you a little second pipe. I have a longer one, much longer than this, but this is a one inch pipe. You can see it slips right into the hole. And that goes to right there, where we'll blow air into the fire. Of course, the fire will be heating the crucible here. This is a pure graphite four kilogram crucible. And that sits in the coals like that. So that concludes the construction of this foundry. But we found it entertaining. This is the part one video for the Crucivia furnace here. I will be recording another video of using it. I will be melting a whole box of aluminum. So thank you for watching. Hopefully you liked it. And subscribe.